Hey, what's up, world? Welcome to Mix in America. I have a guest with me today named Tawende Schrader. She has a really cool story. She's a friend of mine, a coworker of mine, married to another coworker of mine. Um, interesting story. I'll let her tell it. I'm not going to go into it too much. But first of all, Tawende, say hi and tell us your story because you have uh, a different perspective than me, than probably anyone else I know because you're not even from America. So why don't you tell me your story a little bit? I know there's a lot of there's a lot to it, mm-hmm. but just kind of start introduce yourself and tell us your story. So hi, as Josh said, I'm uh, Twende Schrager. Uh, I was born in Africa in a country called Burkina Faso, and uh, then I got uh, adopted when I was three by a French family, uh, and uh, so I grew up with. Uh, a white family. I my parents are white. My brothers are white. I'm the only w- black person in my family. I have four brothers, and so yeah, I've been raised in France. And then when I was about tw- uh, 19, I decided to come in the United States and do the disciple internship, which is a internship program um, that is here at our church. It's a two-year program and during that time I met who was at the time my future husband but he's my husband now uh, and I've been living here ever since. Yes so that's the short version there's a whole lot yes. more to that we actually did a video and it was like the centerpiece of our Easter service one year um, so if you if you don't know to one day you should get to know her if you already know her talk to her. Maybe I shouldn't tell people because then you're going to get annoyed by all these people <laughs> coming up and talk to you. But, but talk to her about her story because it's really cool the way that God orchestrated everything. Yeah. Um, and just the idea that God had a plan and he was with you the whole time. Just amazing. Not going to go into all that right now. Um, specifically, I want to talk about um, race relations. Obviously, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about race. Mm-hmm. You being black in a white family. Obviously, you have a different perspective, right? Because my podcast is Mixed in America, right? Mm-hmm. It's my experience growing up. I'm biracial. I'm in America. Your perspective is different because you were born in Africa, weren't there probably long enough to remember much about it, mm-hmm. grew up in France and then came to America when you were older. I'm I'm assuming, first of all, I want to know reactions from people when whether they meet you or hear you on the phone or whatever, and your name is Twende Schrader, which is a very German last name. Mm-hmm. You are black with a French accent. Yeah. What kind of response? Like, because that. I'm sure people are probably trying to figure out like, okay, wait, are are you German? Are you African? Are you French? Like what? (laughs) Um, Actually, I think, I don't know. I I haven't met, I guess I'm not as sociable as I would think I am. (laughs) But I never really um, uh, had this question yet just because... The people that I know now are the people that I knew before I was married. So for them, it's just, oh, you're 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 the wife of Schrader, who is Derek Schrader, who is the son of so and so. Yeah. And that's basically it. Um, Everybody knows the Schraders around here. They, yeah. They grew up the church. The family's been here forever. So and yeah. People know you now. So, but. I do have, because I'm answering the phone and and stuff, I do have um, people that, like, want to be nice and want to remember my name, (laughs) (laughs) which I think is really funny because I say, this is Tuende, and they would, like, they would be like, oh, uh, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, and I say it again, and then they realize, oh, it's a very complicated name for I'm not going to be able to know it anyway. So. Yeah. And <laughs> so, <laughs> let's just move on. We don't need to have that whole conversation yeah. about and my I name. I was and, definitely yeah. talking with some of my coworker going like, okay, I just really want people to not try. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you do that even at like Starbucks and stuff? Because you give them a different name, right? You don't oh, tell yeah. people my, to one My Starbucks account is, is uh, set up as Lizzie, which is my middle name. Elizabeth is my yeah. middle name. So when I go to Starbucks, it's 
coffee for Lizzie. And don't even you know worry what? about it. Don't don't try I've to never. Yeah, I've ever don't even since try I to moved spell. here, yeah. I've never used my personal my real name for orders and stuff like yeah. that, wherever it is. So, yeah. Sav used to do that. Sav used to give people Jordan instead of oh, saying yeah. Savon. He would always say his name was Jordan because then they didn't have to worry about it. Yeah. Jocelyn thinks it's funny that people can't spell Jocelyn right. So she oh, out. so funny. Yeah, I, it's, like I don't think so it's funny. that hard if you actually think yeah. about it. But people put an S instead of a C or they'll add an E at the end or one of them she got Dawson one time. I was oh, like, wow. you just weren't even listening if you wrote <laughs> Dawson, like D-A-W-S-O-N. I was like, what? Okay. Oh my gosh. That's um, so funny. But let's maybe start backwards. Maybe start at the end a little bit here. But you are married to Derek Trader. Those of you not knowing other, you could probably guess from his name. He's white. Very white. Um, <laughs> what What has that experience been like for you? You maybe, obviously you said you grew up with white people, but you grew up with white French people, so maybe yeah. it's different. Um, is there a, a cultural thing with with the cultural barriers at all with you and Derek? You more probably more so being French than being black, but what has that relationship been like for the two of you, even mixing families maybe? Mm -hmm. Has the black-white thing even... I guess that's even into the conversation because you have actual cultural and language barriers, right? Derek yeah. can't even speak the same language as your parents. Yeah. So um, since we've been married, we've been married three years now. Uh, I mean, it's a lot. It, yes, there is a difference of culture, just mostly about food. Um, being raised in France and by my family, because I do think that there is some some. Uh, cultural thing that come from being raised by my family rather than being raised in France. But anyway, um, mostly about food uh, because I, I do not like a lot of butter in my food. I uh, rather cook something light and, uh, and I don't believe in uh, getting takeout every day of your life. So <laughs> that's not how we do things in America. We do fast, we do greasy, we do heavy cheeseburgers. Yeah. And, and so, so definitely uh, that part has been uh, definitely a, a learning curve for the both of us where I need to understand that that's uh, how he was raised and how. Uh, he's used to think, but he also <laughs> needs to realize that I am uh, the same way, uh, almost on the opposite side. And, and the thing is, it's like, it's so funny because you wouldn't think that being in two countries that are like, um, like known around the world and yeah. whatever. And, um, you wouldn't think that food wise, there would be so much difference, but yeah. the, the, the reality of things is that Europe, Europe, itself has some like intense rules on on the food yeah and then france has their own rule on the food yeah. and which is a whole lot different <laughs> than um in the united states and like for example i before i came here i have never put any of my fruits in the fridge like okay like grapes and and all the, the fruit that yeah. you can think of that you might put in your fridge i have never put them in the fridge really? so we literally just had the conversation of like hey why don't you put the grapes in the fr in the fridge and i'm like because that's not where they're supposed to go they're <laughs> fruits and so yeah or even like eggs same thing we don't put eggs in in the fridge especially since my family has like chicken or used to oh. and so like we wouldn't we would never put the the eggs in the fridge and and here is like if you That's don't what put you them, do yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so Interesting. like little things like that where yeah. it would be it, it's not um big enough to be like a big disagreement and a big uh subject of like argument but yeah. it's big enough to be noticed, you yeah. know? Um, and then, um, yeah, I think it was really hard for my mom at the at first to realize that her son-in-law was not speaking the same language yeah. as her. 
um, they are definitely making some 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 progress in English and everything <laughs> because as we all are growing up and uh, getting married, um, I have another brother that married a English speaking yeah um, person. She uh, she's not from America, but she's been in America for a long time. So anyway, uh, it's yeah. I think that the the biggest part, the biggest culture culture shock shock that we have is the fact that he doesn't speak French, but my parents don't don't really speak English yeah. either. So, but I think it, it has been really interesting because the very first time he came, he basically came over to France to propose to me yeah which i had no idea but <laughs> which but, is awesome by the yeah. way yeah uh and that's an amazing story to tell another time but um uh he basically came to to, to propose so he was like all stressed out and like very focused on the mission in hand <laughs> and yes uh, that's a <laughs> yes I, I know what that day's like that definitely takes a lot of i can't imagine doing it in France, and her parents don't speak English. Oh, for I, sure. He had to actually uh, get one of my brother to translate the letter he had written for my uh, to ask my hand to my uh, father, which is something I asked of him, not he decided to do. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but I really appreciate that that he did that. But yeah. he like that first. Um, trip was like so he would propose to me so yeah. he was stressed out and everything and my parents were like well does he not talk or anything <laughs> and like i was like no oh, i i can assure you <laughs> not a great first impression and everything but then uh he came oh we came back to see my, my family in 2018 during christmas and literally my whole family was there and yeah. uh, that's something my family or my mom's side of family does where we always get all together. And yeah. it's like two weeks of 30 people eating <laughs> food. Uh, Sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, it is. It, it really is. But and I think that that second uh, trip was much better because he like he already had me. <laughs> I was already married <laughs> yeah, to him and everything. Much more. Yeah. So he was much more uh, relaxed and everything. And he got to to talk a little more with my brothers, talk a little more with my family. Um, my family got to like um, discovering a little more. And, and I think that part was really good but again the the whole not talking to uh, the same uh, speaking the same language is um the biggest part um but we make it work yeah. we re re really do it's it's really funny to to sit at the table when my parents and brothers are there and Derek is there too it's, it's just really interesting <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it, it is very entertaining i can imagine um let's talk about race specifically let's yeah. talk about the maybe in your relationship or maybe just in coming to America, um, what has your experience been like as far as being a black woman in America, specifically married to a white guy? Um, I don't know if you've if you've experienced any any actual racism or just being looked at differently or just and then maybe maybe contrast that to what it's like what it was like for you growing up in France because I we've had this conversation before. Uh, Americans were so just self-centered and we think about us <laughs> that we we think of a, of uh, racism as a American problem mm -hmm. right we're like oh yeah America we were founded on slavery and we have racism and it's like look around I'm not saying we don't have that in America but look around the world we're not the only country that deals with this kind of stuff yeah so what was it like for you growing up in France as a black woman in a white family, mm -hmm. by the way, and then also coming to America uh, as a black woman who speaks, uh, you speak English, but French, obviously you speak French. We can hear yeah. your accent <laughs> and, and then marrying a white man. And now your family over here is white, too, because of Derek's yeah. family. I guess um, that's a, there's a yeah. lot to that. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. is, what is race look like for Tawende? So um, growing up in France, uh, I guess my race, like, and I don't like to say my race because it's not, uh, I, I, 
I have a whole different like perspective on just the word race. Anyway, um, do we have time to go into that right now? You, yeah, we're on our lunch break now, real, so we don't have a ton of time. But just really quick, I, it's just that in when I was growing up in France, um, as uh, in school we talked about slavery. In school we talked about everything that France did that really sucked. Yeah, and, <laughs> and 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 I and like. And suck is, is is a very, very small word for what they did and yeah. what happened. And, you know, but uh, we we had a very detailed rundown on how um, black people were treated in France at some point and and all of that. And even how black people were treated in in their own country, yeah. because, you know, France went and kind of decided that uh, all those countries in Africa were Fran- French countries now, and that doesn't make sense anyway. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's what we learn in school. And we just learned that it was a bad thing that happened. It was also what was happening during that time. Yeah. Like, France was not the only country that doing that. Yeah. Um, but we also learned that we... We we are trying to move on. We're trying yeah. to be better and grow as a country and uh, and everything. And um, so uh, when it comes to the word race, actually in France, I would have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure that the word has been like almost scratched from the dictionary okay. because... Um, we consider that there is just a human race yeah. and then there is human beings that just happen to have different uh, skin tone. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, I guess, one of the biggest points here is that I've heard the word race so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the last The year. very first time I've heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Like, it was... Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I had never used the word race in French for anything. Really? Um, yeah, they just taught us, yeah, this is the human race and you have different skin tones. Yeah. Uh, and which I I kind of agree with that yeah. statement, you know. So so can I ask and we'll get back, I'll let you get back to finish yeah. the story, but did you and I've talked to you about this before too? The term African American. Mm-hmm. That's what we use in America, right? To yeah. say if your skin is a certain darkness, you're African American, which gets complicated even if I mean my mom's pretty light skinned already. And mm-hmm. then I'm I'm pretty light for but am I African American? I mean how how African am I if I've never been to Africa, my family's never been to Africa, my generations, right? Like I, I couldn't tell you what country my ancestors are from, right? Where we grew I grew up in America, my ancestors from America. Mm-hmm. Um, So to qualify me as an African-American seems weird to me. Um, Obviously, you're not an African-American. I mean, Mm -hmm. you were born in Africa. Technically, I don't think you're a citizen yet, but you are legally in America. So you're America-ish, but you're (laughs) so like so that term African-American. But then in France, obviously, when you see a black person, you don't call them Mm African-American because you're not in France. They're not. (laughs) <laughs> Definitely not American, and they're probably not even African. Or so, like, what was if they didn't use the term race, they didn't call you African American. What what a term do they use in I'm France? I'm just black. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I've been. Well, technically, I am a African person. Um, you were born in Africa. Yeah, so, I was yeah. born in Africa. So, well, but and like again, I just I would. There is some people that would call me a uh, Burkinabe, which is uh, how you call people coming from my country okay. in Africa. Okay. Uh, and it, because it's really weird to me, even that um, that we say Americans, because yes, it's the United States of America, but America is a continent. Oh, well, yeah, two right? continents, technically, North yes. America and South America. So Canadians, Mexicans, yeah. even Brazilians, they're yeah. all at, they're all technically, that's America, North and South America. So... so I think that comes down to that selfish thing of America. Of, uh, now I just said, now I don't even want to say Americans. That comes down <laughs> to that 
the the way that we and it, not in a oh it's a bad way but not like Americans are very self focused like we think I, of the United States as this is America yeah technically it's not even yeah so I was just yeah I was just saying it's just so and so interesting to me that someone would call me an African because uh, well that's not the country I'm coming from yeah. because Africa is a continent yeah and uh, it like we really call our ourselves as french people we really call ourselves european yeah and there is a lot of people here that call french people european or any yeah. people from you just know, lob them Europe, all together you know, every like, country yeah. yeah you're just all european. uh so yeah. yeah i would be called a black person i would be called a uh Burkina bay which is how we say people coming from my country um or a French, uh, yeah. it's and it, and it's been really interesting because I'm French. Uh, yeah. My Clearly. passport is French. Yeah. My education is French as well, up until I was eighteen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, actually, a little bit older than that too. But anyway, um, but yeah, so it it's been interesting because yeah, I think here. If someone meets me for the first time, they just see me, they will go, oh, she's an African-American. And I'm not. Yeah. I'm definitely not. Not at all. <laughs> Which, not even a little bit. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, so sorry. Back to the other thing we're talking about the uh, being. So because we kind of went off on what is race. Right. Yeah. So assuming in these contexts, we'll use the term race. You're black. Yeah. Your family's white. Um, your now in-laws are white. What is that? Is it even come up? Is it even a thing? Like, do so, you have four white brothers? Does, yeah. does that matter? Like, did did your parents ever treat treat you any differently? Does you know yeah. Derek's parents or or brothers kind of been like you got a lot of brothers now? Wow, yeah. I'm just adding I got two seven. more. Yeah, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but just so that no, that whole dynamic six, of yeah. of being black in a white family uh, or in white settings, how has What's your experience been like? Uh, what's that been like for you? Okay, so I'm going to start with my family just because it's longer and <laughs> that's who raised me. Yeah. But with my family, the fact that I was black rarely came up, like, came up at all. Yeah. Because, um, I don't know, it's just, I was, so, because also the fact that I was adopted add another layer to into the whole thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, for but, sure. But um, I think all in all, and my mom will tell you that, we actually just had a conversation about adoption and uh, and everything. And, like, we were kind of talking about um, my story. And, and she was like, well, to me, you're just my daughter. Like, I just love you and i'm just blessed by you because you're my daughter i was just part of the family yeah uh my skin color never really came up yeah uh um my hair came up quite a few <laughs> times just because you know you actually have to take care of it and everything yeah. and i'm sure um, your mom had no idea how to yeah, yeah. and it, that was and i'm and that's the reason why i think my mom is literally the best mom ever just because <laughs> she had so much to figure out with me uh and my skin tone and my hair and how i was growing up because i grew up super fast uh too um so yeah, my my biological family is like really tall. Oh. So like <laughs> as I was like eleven. Yeah. And I think I I gained like I don't know this size that I am right yeah. now. I was that size when I was like in junior high. <laughs> so and your family had no idea what to do with that. Yeah, um, it was it was just that aspect. But other than that, everything was pretty normal yeah. if that's even a thing for a family like i feel nobody, like every no but no family family is, is just you we all in think everybody way. else is normal we all think our family's got no, yeah nobody's normal but um i think the the biggest difference in the way my parents uh raised me is because i was a girl and my brothers were boys yeah it just meant that growing up i ended up being able to do things by myself a little later because you know you need to protect the 
the girl of the family, yeah. even though yeah. that was definitely not my mindset. <laughs> I was, I grew up being like part of the boys yeah. and I was doing everything my, my brothers were doing. And um, I had my own part, like little stereotypical girly thing, like yeah. playing with dolls and stuff like that. But I was definitely um, running around with the boys and, and yeah. doing whatever the boys were doing. So yeah, I guess that's, how it was for me in France. Um, yeah. Now, now, how about here in America? You come come to America, maybe not knowing what to expect. Um, I don't know if you would, if again, race relations, using that word race again, that um, what you expected from America, what you experienced in America, and then specifically um, marrying a white guy. And I don't know if that looks at things any differently, or if you know Derek's parents or family because I know them, I, I would assume it's, it wasn't an issue at all, but um, what was your experience like in that? Um, I think I, I will say this. I, I came with uh, uh, here with no expectations. Uh, I think my biggest concern was just the fact that I would have to speak a language that I usually didn't use that often. Yeah. Uh, I think that was my pick, my biggest like concern coming here i didn't really think about the fact that i was black i didn't really think about the fact that you know like it, it just because i was raised the way i was raised yeah the fact that i was black was kind of a background thing yeah anyway so then i came here and um i mean for the most part i guess I guess for the most part, I've never, like, I wouldn't say never, but I, I guess the first two years, there was a lot of, like, being in the internship and just yeah. and just volunteering inside the church. Yeah. So when you're within the walls of the church, it feels, all everything feels safe, thankfully, yeah, you that's, know. That's a good thing, at least. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's important. It is a very good thing. So, um, so yeah, the first two years were just, just fine um i think that there was uh, a lot of like people that just didn't know how to address me not because i was black but just because i was from france and yeah. uh my english was not as good as it is right now yeah, it's definitely better <laughs> I, I can attest to that it's definitely easier to understand you now you than... know and and i was not as uh um outspoken that's how I always say okay, yeah. like, as spoken that I am right now. So like uh, the the disciple internship years were more um, of me just like focusing on God and focusing on, on the things that I came here to do. And then, uh, uh, but then. Then you got distracted and fell in love and married I Derek. didn't get distracted. <laughs> I, I I think, yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> I'm assuming you weren't planning on marrying a guy. In no, I was not. And that's the thing, too. Um, the, the very first year, the funny thing is that the very first year before I left, my um, my pastor back in France, France was like, uh, like, oh, and you're coming back, right? And I was like, yeah. Well, of course I'm coming back. What are you <laughs> saying? Like, what? And uh, oh, but Derek was just too irresistible, huh? Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but it, it was just so funny because every I I felt like everybody was like, oh, she's just she like, not telling me because yeah. you know you don't want to give me ideas. Yeah. But <laughs> but like they were thinking, oh, she's got to stay there and she's got to get married and whatever. And in my head, it was like, no, I'm going back to friends. And yeah. like even the first year, at the end of the first year, I didn't even know if I was going back for the second year. So I was like, no, I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely coming back to friends. And then sec second year happened, uh, even before. Uh, I like started talking with Derek or anything. I I just was like, I don't know. I just really like it here. <laughs> <laughs> and then that happened. So yeah. um but uh after that and and actually getting in, into a relationship with Derek, we definitely have had like a few weird looks and yeah. and stuff like that, but I I guess it's kind of like when you're so in love, you don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so I I guess at the time I just didn't like think of anything of it and yeah. and unfortunately you get so used to to being like to have weird looks I mean yeah. I would when I was back in France even though like in my family it was not a thing we, I would walk around with my four brothers yeah. that were all white and people would always assume that one of them was my boyfriend oh yeah <laughs> They didn't assume so, your sister did or something yeah. like that, and, and and it's like, and then they would ask me, and I'm like, "You no, <laughs> gross. That's my brother." Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, here, like, I guess, yeah, I just at first I didn't really pay attention to those things, even though they happened. Um, and then on um, now, and the race conversation r never really happened with my family yeah because for us it was kind of a given like of course wow. like this is my daughter <laughs> yeah. like what do you think i i think yeah. of her like yeah you know um but definitely everything that happened the past few months have yeah has brought up a lot of conversation um I do think that with my family, I have a he easier time talking about it just because, you know, they know me and yeah. uh, I know them. I know uh, their heart and everything. Um, but yeah, it's been a, a little bit interesting with like, with, you know, with uh, Derek's family, it, it's new relationships still. Yeah. Um, even though it's been six years, I've known Derek's father more than i've known <laughs> longer than i've known him what okay because i started working uh at the uh stage crew for the christmas oh, show yeah, the first yeah, year okay. of my internship so yeah. um but anyway i i do think we've I, and i don't think that it's something like specific to my in-laws yeah i think it's just when you start talking about an intense subject like that yeah um that can be so intense for some people. Yeah, and, it's it's an uncomfortable you know, conversation yeah, to it, have. It is it's definitely not a, an uncomfortable yeah. conversation, and I, and I guess it never really came to my mind that I would ever have to have that conversation yeah. with someone else. You know, um, so I think that aspect of it has been a little bit uh, challenging for me, just because it's like I have to be intentional about about those things yeah and uh and yeah i mean like we would have to ask i guess derek's family about <laughs> what they think and everything yeah. but um my my mom at least she uh she's always like she's always loved <laughs> the fact that i was black yeah because in her head, well, I actually, when I was younger, she she thought that I would marry a black guy. So she was really excited for <laughs> black grandchildren. And then I married the whitest guy you, you, <laughs> you could possibly <laughs> find. Yep. So now she's just really excited for mixed kids. Yeah, mixed kids are the best. I will. I can. I can attest to that. <laughs> mixed sure. kids are awesome. So yeah. So that's a little bit of what um, what it's been so far. I think. Uh, and again, with with Derek, the whole like race conversation never happened yeah. until really this whole thing uh, happened, and I started feeling a certain way. He and he didn't even think like, oh, wait, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, she is black. Oh yeah, she my wife's is, black. Like, I forgot. You know, yeah. So, and and I think that's that's not a bad thing. It's yeah. just. It's just the way it is, and I think it's actually a good thing because it means that uh, your your life is somewhat uh, normal to the point where you just live your life and yeah. and deal with things the way they come. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. No, oh, I think that's great. Uh, we, I, I mean, I feel like we covered a lot, but we barely scratched the surface. There's a whole yeah. lot more we could talk about, but we are on our lunch break and we should get back to work. So uh, I'm not going to keep you any longer unless there's anything else you want to say about, um, you know, if how hard it is for you and Derek to take pictures together because he's so white <laughs> and you have to kind of like, he's in the shade and oh, you're yeah. in the it's sun a, and finally in there. It's a whole <laughs> pr production of like, 
finding the right space. But one thing I would like to say, though, yeah. is um, that often I'm asked, like, how, like, and even you, you, you asked me, and I feel like I didn't really answer your question, but, um, like, how different uh, this, this whole race issue is in France and in America. Yeah. And, I, and I think that um, it's it's different it's not a, like it exists in france racism yeah. exists everywhere yeah. unfortunately but i do think that it's a little different because as i was saying in the beginning we are taught in france and if you have a good teacher which i <laughs> had so yeah. praise god anyway <laughs> but we are taught the story of france like it's a whole like I think it's a trimester. Like it's three months of yeah. like going over the um, uh, slavery years and and all the I, I can't remember what it's called, <laughs> but like all the the exchange that has been done between France, Africa, excuse me, and and US, United States. Like it's yeah. a whole other trimester to just go through. Uh, and yes, in school in France, it's trimesters, trimesters yeah. not <laughs> semesters. But um, it's like a whole trimester to go through it. It's like very, a whole trimester to go through uh, colonization, too, yeah. because France has colonized a whole bunch of African countries. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot to go through. And I think that it helps having those conversations early on. Yeah. Uh, and it helps uh, also teach her teachers uh address the subject early on because yeah. that's the moment our teacher basically set, set us down and said hey there is no race yeah it is human race and some people happen to have a different skin tone and usually you you get like most of the time you get the skin tone of your parents but then sometimes you don't and then that's yeah. all fine um and Actually, one time, one of my biology teacher asked me if I was uh, my biological brother. Like, my brother and I were biological twins. Oh. And the thing is, obviously, we're not. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why was that we were the same age. We are the same age, but we're a week apart. So she was like, oh, well, maybe you're, you're, you're like... But I was like, it doesn't make sense. So what... I, I came out and then my mom just waited, waited a week. for a week and, <laughs> and then yeah so yeah I was a biology teacher and didn't yeah, understand how that works because yeah, I, I feel like a biology teacher should understand a little I bit know. more about, it was just so funny yeah, but yeah so I do think that uh, all that that time that we spend just going over the whole history of things help us have this conversation help teachers address the subjects yeah. and also if something happened in recess during recess and it's obviously someone being stupid and yeah. being racist and whatever they can address it and like you know i feel i feel like it really helps that communication going um and as far as i know here in the united states it's a little bit different um yeah, maybe not taught and, as well yeah. and as thoroughly as yeah because so, we kind of like to gloss over the the bad stuff we did yeah like, and, and the thing is it's like it, no actually when you make like in life in general when you make mistakes don't try to hide them because most yeah. of the time people see them anyway, we'll anyway yeah. <laughs> but uh but it's always good to like go back and say okay where did i go wrong and yeah. like try to learn from your, from your mistakes yeah. and i feel like as a country and as a world anyway we should be able to look back and do the same and say yeah. okay this happened in history that was bad yeah let's not do it let's again let's not do it again <laughs> i love that that that's all the time i want to take Unless there's anything else you want to say. Nope. No, I thought that was great. Uh, again, uh, there's a lot more to this. Um, obviously, me and you will continue to have conversations because we work together. Yeah. Um, but maybe we'll maybe we'll do a part two or something. We can talk even more about this. But 
Thank you, Twende, yeah, for taking the time. It. Thanks for having me. Yes, and thank you guys for listening. Join me next Monday for the next episode of Mix in America. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did, can you do three things for me? Can you like the video, subscribe to my channel, and tell your friends.